No one faces humanity anymore. No one dares face them on the battlefield. No one dares question them. They only try to hold on to their own territory, but they would never, ever want to face off against humans again. Everything came to a head on a planet the humans call 1313-5. This was an odd nomenclature as the humans seemed to number their sectors and their planets. So on this planet, two different species landed to face off against the humans. After fighting their way through the small protection fleet they had, many of the human ships that remained ducked behind the planet to try and regroup and try to use hit-and-run tactics against the enemy. While this was happening, a landing was forced onto the planet, and though losses were heavy, they still made it. However, the humans had done something they always do. They had dug into the dirt. Cutting into the ground, using the foliage to cover themselves from the space, many of the times you couldn't see what was out there. Yet, there was trenches, there was bunkers, there was pillboxes, there was all sorts of defense measures all over the place, and this was a walking death trap for those that faced off against humanity. Yet, the two species, the Lycan and the Michele Bembe, decided that they were going to stop humanity's expanse here, and they would not get anywhere near their territories. The lichen, a very canine-type species that was slightly larger than humanity, and was considered dangerous considering its size, its strength, not the fastest thing that anyone had seen. However, with its strong claws and fangs, it could rip into just about any other species, barring armor being in the way, of course. The Michele Bembe being a more reptilian species, with four massive legs to walk on, and a huge bulbous body and a long neck and tail on either side, along with its standard manipulators, of course. They decided that they would not allow any other species closer. It's bad enough they had the lichens, though they at one time had fought each other. They had come down to peace, but they would not allow another carnivorous species anywhere near them. It was too dangerous, as they themselves were a prey species. So... Instead of being defensive, they decided the best defense was a good offense. And on this planet, they continued to push their way through. They pushed their way through layer after layer of trenches and pillboxes. They crushed humans underfoot. Humans fought with such veracity that no one ever dared question their will to fight back. Yet they were simply outnumbered. The lichen would run through the area, bouncing off trees and jumping down on a human, tearing at it, sometimes picking up the human's weapon and using it against them until it seemed to not want to work anymore, and then simply running across again, grabbing another one and doing the same thing. The Michele Bembe would simply charge into the area. The kinetic weapons seemed to not work unless they were somehow mounted on a vehicle. Those were large enough to actually get through the Michele Bembe hide. The small arms were not strong enough to do so, and many a human were crushed underfoot, as the Michele Bembe would not only just charge over and squish them down, but sometimes have fun with it and roll across them sideways, or use their tail to splash around. Along with that, coming from their own ships, they had their own version of artillery that would rain down on any human position they found. The air was just a nest of all sorts of in-atmosphere fighters, the humans holding tenuously onto the air fought back with as much strength as possible, yet they were completely outgunned. However, this had much more to do with numbers than it did with technology level, as humanity was able to pull out some amazing things like plasma throwers and things of that nature. Eventually, they all lined up against one of the strongest defenses they had, a strange line in the sand. It seemed as though each angle was designed specifically to be some sort of kill zone for those that assaulted. You would think that orbital bombardment would be a thing, but the distortion field put over top was enough to stop any type of energy weapon from coming down and immediately disarm any type of ordnance that would be flying in. So they would have to do this 
the violent way. They ran at the opponent. Humanity immediately got up onto the trench and began firing the lichens riding on the back of the Makela Bembe as they crushed through the first line. And as they reached the trench, the Makela Bembe simply jumped on pillboxes to destroy them, crushing down defenses. And while they did that, the lichens began to run through the trenches, clawing and ripping apart everything. Though losses were heavy for both sides, humanity did not survive. And as those victors sat there amongst the dead bodies and were happy, cheering, howling into the night at their victory, they looked around and thought it was rather interesting. How could they possibly be so dangerous? And as night fell, they sat there waiting listening to their communication systems to see if their own ships would tell them that humanity was coming, but humanity was in full retreat. But as they sat there, they listened. They could hear strange noises. Something was around. They were all on high alert. Someone was moving around. Somebody was getting close. Many of the lichens would jump up at the noise, end up crashing into each other not realizing what was going on, yelling at each other for making noise. And the other one would say, but you were the one making noise. I was quiet. They were confused about this. The Michaela Bembe couldn't sleep either. They were looking around, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. They had to rest their large bodies inside whatever crevice they could find. And they could feel as though something was clawing at them at night. Clawing, pulling at them. They couldn't sleep. It felt like... Human hands were wrapping around their throats. Sometimes it's like an arm would wrap around. They knew this. This was what humans did when they tried to choke them. And sometimes they would wake up coughing and gagging if they were able to actually fall asleep. They ran around trying to find out what was there. They could see shadows moving around back and forth. They were waiting for the shots. They knew humans were close. They were going to use kinetics. Oh, wait, were they going to use blades? With this, many of the lichens started to extend their claws and then thrash at any single movement, many times hurting their own. Many would sit there and bleed out on the ground from their own friendly slashes that were not so friendly. Many of the Michaela Bembe would freak out so much that they would end up going screaming into the night, feeling as though they're being mauled by being beaten up by being choked by all these arms and hands wrapping around them. They couldn't understand. Many of them ran straight into the trap. Many of them knew there was a minefield on the other side. Many of them screaming in fear didn't even care. They ran right into the minefield and the last thing they knew was that something had gone through their bodies. The large plate that was designed specifically for armor was more than enough to take care of a single Michaela Lebembe. The lichens continued to move around, trying to figure out what was going on. The Michaela Lebembe, when they freaked out, would start screaming, they're on me, they're on me, they're on me, and then take off into the night. Many looked, and if they had night vision, they would look to see if there was anything going on, if there was anything on their backs, but there was nothing. Their own allies were freaking out and running off into the darkness, many of them running back to their own lines, some running straight to where the humans were, some tripping on explosives. It was horrific. The lichens weren't doing much better as their senses were on high alert. Every single tiny twinge of wind any slight movement, any noise was enough to get them moving and they would go and rush out. They could also hear voices, the voices, the voices of those that were creeping up on them. The voices, these were human voices. And throughout the night, they would lash out at these voices, lunge at each other, more often than not crashing into each other and killing each other. And then in sorrow, look at each other as one of them died from rapid blood loss and of course being perforated by a bunch of claws and teeth. Many just thrashed out, grabbed a hold with their claws and started ripping apart whatever they were holding on to and then come back to their senses and realize that they were holding on to their packmate. Many of them lost their minds there, 
extended their claws, reached up on the side of their neck, and began to claw at the side, waiting for the light-colored blood to start pouring out. Many of them would wait to see the blood squirt across the side of the trench, and then wait for the darkness to come take them. A single lichen survived. As the reinforcements arrived the next morning, he was sitting there, holding his legs, as he sat on his tail that he had ripped off himself, rocking back and forth, saying the same thing over and over again. The rest of the reinforcements took him, brought him back to the rear. Nobody knew what was going on, but they knew they had to secure the forward position, so they did, and they knew they would be there that night. The next day, nobody heard a word from these positions. Nobody understood what was going on. All they knew that every time they sent someone up into the positions, even those farther back were beginning to show signs that they couldn't understand what was going on. Something was just always around them. Something was always hunting them. Something was making them lose their freaking minds. It was decided then, once several more came back, saying the same thing as the first, that they need to leave. They need to recoup their losses. They need to stay as far away from humans as possible. And as they did, they got back to their leadership, who all looked at the dozen or so that had survived. As they sat there rocking, some of them curled up sideways on the ground as they continued to rock back and forth, never blinking, never turning away. The only time they closed their eyes was when they actually fell asleep. They wouldn't eat anything. They wouldn't drink anything. But as they sat there, curled up as though they were a pup that just came out of their mother, they said the same thing. We kill them and they don't die. We kill them. They keep coming back. We kill them and they don't die. We kill them and they keep coming back. We kill them and they don't die. We kill them and they keep coming back. We kill them. We kill them. They don't die. We kill them and they, and they don't stay dead.